Okay. How many of you know your BMI? Or would like to know your BMI? Yeah. Write this number down, 703. 703. So Dr. V, whoever, who will go nameless, had a weight of 165. Let's calculate his. So type in, oh, do you have a calculator? iPhone, whatever. So 165, the weight divided by his height twice, uh, whatever, whoever he was. Uh, and he was uh, 510. 5 times 12 is 60, plus 10 is 70 inches. So 165 divided by 70, divided by 70, times 703, 23.67. Now, so you can put in your weight, the formula is your weight in pounds, divided by your height in inches twice, times 703. So the formula is actually weight divided by height squared. That's why we divide by height twice. Multiply by 703 to get to the metric units, and that gives you the BMI. So by definition, arbitrarily, 25 and below is normal. 25 to 30 is overweight, over 30 is obese, etc. So that will give you an idea. Although, you know, BMIs 50 years ago in the U.S. were a lot lower. Uh, the BMIs of students of mine who come, f uh, medical students from Asia, their BMIs are 21. And, you know, they, they look un unhealthy, but, I mean, they're healthy. So BMI just, is just one parameter to use. So any questions about how to calculate your BMI? Well, so, oh, 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 the definitions of, so up through 25 is normal. 25 to 30 is overweight, over 30 obese. But it's arbitrary, meaning nobody really knows. These are names we label to it. So I did come up with a, a joke, Bill. Um, if the LA Lakers are going low carb, I Google, they, they, yeah, last fall in the news, LA Lakers go low carb. Kobe Bryant leads the paleo low carb. Well, they must be eating Kobe beef. <laughs> So, I still don't know how many low fat, high carb, anyway, low carb, high fat researchers it takes to screw in a light bulb. Let me know. That'd be a great one. Well, I'd like to end up today synthesizing everything you've, well, almost synthesizing everything you've learned today in layman's terms. Uh, and I'm going to do a role play as if you came to my clinic teaching. And I go about a half hour, 45 minutes. If I have usually three to five people in a small group. And if they're really talkative and have lots of questions, I go about 45 minutes usually. Um, and this class is available on YouTube. It's if you type in Dr. Westman diet, you'll see me at the end of the table in a white coat. And I apologize for the campy, low-budget filming. It was basically a student who did it, but it has a kind of a charm, unique charm to it because it's so bad. Um, <laughs> now, I can't tailor this class to you and your own conditions. I'll try to incorporate what I've heard so far today as questions, though. Um, so in true role-playing fashion, I'll do time out, time in, Remember these role-playing things? Any teachers here? So, so if you, so, you know, someone really has a question, burning question, we can time out and then time back in. But um, so you're not supposed to interrupt me. It's like you've come to my clinic eager to learn from me, right? So yeah, you might want to wake up in the back, sir. But um, uh, so imagine you're around a table and you have seen me as a doctor for obesity, weight loss, or diabetes, or something like that. And this is your second time back. We did a, a hour long. I asked you how your, your health was. I asked you for your entire life history. Of course, we only have 
five minutes about that, but um, I learned a lot about people who, uh, who are willing to, to share that information, and, and that's part of the whole rapport building. Um, the story you heard from Lynn today was uh, one of many that I've heard, and it's a, a, I'm back to you. I just help point you on a, a pathway, and uh, I, I listen, I, I try to develop rapport, and we checked your blood tests. They all looked fine. And you know, we checked the thyroid, we checked the kid liver, kidney, all that. Um, and so now this is your second time back. Okay. Um, so we'll time in. Um, does everyone have their handout? Okay, so welcome back. Oh, yeah, please pull out your handout. Um, there are two handouts. The short one I'll go through in pretty great detail, almost paragraph to by paragraph. The other one, other one really is just recipes for your reference. And I ran, my copy machine broke, so I don't have handouts for you today. I'll get them for you next time. Um, this is the Lifestyle Medicine Clinic, Duke University Medical Center, no sugar, no starch diet. Everybody have that? Great. If you don't have it, there are extra copies in the back that you can get to follow along. And oh, I see you brought your husband with you. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'm glad you brought your family member. It's very nice to have the family member know what's going on because I'm going to want her to be very strict on the sugar and starch. Okay, so thank you for coming. This way of eating is a diet low in sugary and starchy foods. Because starches are easily digested to sugar, starchy foods are similar to sugar and must be avoided as well if we're going to keep the carbohydrates low. This way of eating also focuses on eating real food and includes meat, fish, cheese, eggs, salads, and vegetables, the way Mother Nature intended the food to be, perhaps. This eating plan will provide your body with the nutrition that it needs and will change the fuel that your body uses from mainly sugars and starches to mainly fat. So what's going on behind the scenes is your body becomes a fat-burning machine. And, well, that's what you want, right? The, this is extra fat, and you, you want to burn that, right? Yes, okay, thank you. Um, I want to make sure you're awake. So um, if you wanted to burn carbohydrate, you'd be in the other class, the carbohydrate-burning class, and this is the fat-burning class. Um, <laughs> Remember, because remember, your body stores fat, it's just energy. It's not right or wrong. We have almost an unlimited store of fat on our body. We only have about a one day store of carbohydrate. So any extra carbohydrate that you eat actually gets turned to fat. So we want to turn into fat burning machines. Um, sugar and starches are also known as carbohydrates and can be measured in grams, which is a unit of weight. But a gram isn't much weight, okay? To maximize fat burning, your carbohydrate intake will be 20 grams or less per day, and that was found through trial and error through lots and lots of different people. This means that you'll need to avoid sugar, bread. So a slice of bread has 15 grams of carbohydrates. An apple has 20 grams of carbohydrates. A banana, 30 grams. It's even worse, or higher in carbs. So if you're gonna be under 20 grams, we simplify things and just say no fruit. It simplifies things. Oh, what, You're, you think you can't not eat fruit? Well, you know, a friend of mine, Dr. Finney, gives this lecture about how Arctic people uh, who lived in the Arctic, the Eskimos, the Inuit, they never had fruits and vegetables, and they lived for generations to, to be just fine. And uh, you may, did you see that one on YouTube? Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> so when you limit the carbohydrate intake, your hunger will go away. So that's the critical thing you'll notice. In the next couple days, you're just not going to be hungry. It's like I'm giving you a pill to suppress your appetite, but I'm not. I mean, I could give you a pill. I'm, I'm an internist, a, a medical weight loss doctor. I'm not a surgeon. Uh, and I could give you a pill, but I find I don't need to. Most people get the appetite suppression just by changing the diet. If you have extra weight on your body, you will eat less and lose weight. A list of the foods initially allowed is provided to assist you in changing your eating patterns. And those are the foods on page four. But don't go to page four yet. Okay, good. Uh, medical supervision is re recommended for any type of weight loss, especially if you're taking medications. Often the medications become too strong. 
So my job is to take away your hunger, to get you off medications as you no longer need them, and also to make sure that whatever you're eating is sustainable. Because if you are eating a certain way and you don't like it, you're not going to stay on it very long, right? So you have to like the foods, the, the lifestyle that I'm teaching you today, okay? Possible side effects. I need to let you know that the first week uh, then, you know, that friend of mine, Dr. Finney, and, and actually Dr. Volek, uh, they give these talks about how there's this keto adaptation period, the first week or two, you might feel a little strange as you go from carbohydrate burning to fat burning. That's okay, and we've learned a few tricks to, to minimize those side effects. The side effects might be sugar cravings, flu-like symptoms, things like that. The first important thing to do is to drink lots of liquids. So when you're thirsty, drink, okay? Um, Pretty, pretty wise advice, right? When you're thirsty, drink. Um, and then I, I you know, think that if you're hungry, you should eat. But if you're not hungry, you shouldn't have to eat, right? So it's kind of simple. Um, one thing you may notice is constipation. Constipation is not going to the bathroom less frequently or not going every day and you've gone every day throughout your life. Constipation is hard stools or hard to pass stools. And if that happens, let me know. That's not good. And here are some remedies that I'll point to. Probably the most frequent recommendation I'll give is the one teaspoon of milk of magnesia at, bed at bedtime every day as a, preventat as a preventative. Um, there are lots of things that other doctors will use, but they might have carbohydrates in them. So ask me if you have constipation or any other side effect, okay? Remember, this is a medically supervised program, and I'm your doctor, and if you have a problem, you come back to me, right? Thank you. Turn the page to page two. So bad breath occurs maybe one in a blue, once in a blue moon. I maybe see it once every few months in my clinical practice. And here's some pointers for that. Sugar cravings are much more common and during the first couple days you might notice you crave things like sweets, like fruit, like pasta, like rice. You might crave those things. Those are really just sugar cravings. They will pass or you can treat the sugar cravings with sugar-free beverages like diet soda, sugar-free flavoring like Crystal Light as a powder you can add in or sugar-free Hawaiian Punch, something like that. Sugar-free Jello is probably the most popular sweet treat because it has no carbs in it. You put a little whipped cream on it, something like that. That's, uh, you can have that for dessert. If you have a sweet tooth, stock up on sugar-free Jello. Bouillon is a trick we've learned from that uh, Dr. Finney guy uh, who is, I mean, he's brilliant. He's, I learned a lot from him. And he says you have to have salt if you do a low carbohydrate diet. And at first, some of these symptoms might be from salt. What, you, you don't want to have salt? I mean, you've heard somewhere that you're not supposed to have salt, maybe. That's okay, because uh, actually, this way of eating is not the same way that a lot of people have been taught. Like the, so the low fat diet has its own general rules. It's kind of like driving on the right-hand side of the road. You know, I'm going to teach you how to drive on the left-hand side of the road. It's not wrong. Uh, well, yeah, they do make the cars with the steering wheel on the other side. And, and yeah, you do have to stay to the left of the road. But if you've been to England or, yeah, or, or the, somewhere that England owned in the past, they will uh, drive on the left-hand side of the road. It's not wrong. It's just different. So on a low-carb diet, we don't fear the salt. So early on, I want you to have bouillon, which is a way to get salt twice a day if you don't have high blood pressure or heart failure. And that will minimize that transition from carb burning to fat burning. Ketosis, you may have heard that term. Ketosis is okay. It means that your body is burning fat. And that's what you want, right? Remember, we talked about that before. You, you want to burn fat. So ketosis is fine. It's not ketoacidosis, and a lot of well-intentioned family members, doctors, other health people will think this is ketoacidosis because they look in the back of the book and all they see under ketosis is ketoacidosis. But that's not what it is. You know, I just came from a really cool conference in uh, San Luis someplace, and I saw the charts by Dr. Volnick who showed all the ketone levels and that nutritional ketosis is very different than ketoacidosis. The levels are much lower, so you don't have to worry about that. Ketosis is fine. It just means you're burning fat. 
What happens if I slip? Well, you have to be strict to this way of eating because this is a very metabolic diet. It takes you from carb burning to fat burning. So all of your little factory cell, cells and enzymes are now burning fat. So if you eat carbohydrate, you have to turn off all those fat burning enzymes and turn on the carb burning ones and you may stop the fat burning for up to three days. Or we're learning in some people who have diabetes, you might stop the fat burning for a couple weeks. So you can't eat the carbs. Uh, it's common to me um, you know, if you come back saying, well, I'm doing really well, doc. I just had carbs on Monday and Friday. Uh, no, no, this doesn't work. It doesn't work. So um, in the last sentence of that paragraph, you may be surprised that it's not difficult to be strict because your hunger will be decreased or gone entirely. So it's actually not difficult to be strict and to stay away from those carbs. Um, vitamins and supplements, we uh, do recommend a multivitamin if you're not menstruating or losing iron, or if your doctor doesn't say you should have iron, then an iron-free multivitamin is what we recommend. Cholesterol. A lot of people ask me about cholesterol and they wonder how this diet will affect the cholesterol because it's not a low-fat diet. And you've all heard about low-fat diets for blood cholesterol. The predictions about how this way of eating would adversely affect the blood cholesterol didn't come true when the studies were done. And I was privileged to be a part of those studies about starting 15 years ago. And what happened though is by eating this way, the cardiac risk factors actually got better by lowering the blood triglycerides and by raising the good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol. So nobody knew that that would happen and the, what was found in the studies was actually a healthy thing. Studies now from all around the world, including Europe, including Australia, have found the same thing and that is eating this way actually improves the cardiac risk factors. Okay, so time out. What do you think so far? You with me? Yeah, okay, good. Um, even, so even you advanced course guys, you're learning a few. Things. How about if you've never heard this, um, uh, are you just terrified now? And, yeah, <laughs> so, I love it, okay, no. Um, turn the page, so time in. Your weight's not the only thing that will improve. You're gonna, time out. Do you realize, I'm just almost reading this, but now, depending on what I've heard, from people, I'll focus on those things. So, um, uh, not to make it just to read it, but uh, the color commentary, basically I'm trying to bring in from the questions that I've heard, something I've heard from my, my, the people I, that are in the class. Um, and, um, uh, but anyway, that, that just keeps me on track. And, and it makes it so that's something you could use as well. If you're teaching other people um, it, um, anyway, time in. So your weight's not the only thing that will improve. You'll notice better energy levels, often in the first week. Some people notice they have all this energy and they find themselves cleaning their house. Yeah, well, sir, sorry about that, but um, you may have to clean your house now. Um, <laughs> but um, we've done studies now with diabetes. Diabetes gets better with irritable bowel syndrome, with fatty liver disease, with heartburn, with uh, irritable bowel, heartburn, fatty liver, and PCOS, the, one of the most common causes of infertility in women, polycystic ovary syndrome, gets better on the low carb diet. It's as if, so I'm an internal medicine specialist. I used to give a pill for each of these problems, the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, and now I take them away because I'm treating the root cause of all of these different problems. Uh, it's really pretty fun. It's pretty amazing. Lifestyle medicine is the name of this kind of medicine that I practice. It also involves increasing activity and reducing stress, the next paragraph on page three. But I find that all I really need to focus on at first is the diet. So if you don't feel like exercising, you can't do it now, that's okay. Don't stress about it. Well, you mean you've heard that you have to exercise to lose weight? Oh, your doctor told you every time you're not exercising enough, you know, just exercise more. Well, actually, that's not an effective way to lose weight. So we teach at the Obesity Medicine Society, the classes there, that exercise is not a great way to lose weight. You really have to address the diet. Um, 
If you came to the Duke Diet and Fitness Center, which is just down the street here in Durham, which is where I learned how to do this, uh, oh yeah, you'd have to pay $2,000 a week to go there, and that doesn't include the hotel you have to stay in, but um, they will immerse you in nutrition, in activity, and stress uh, management all at once. And, uh, but when I started this clinic about seven years ago, I had to do this with you living in your own town, your own house, and, and your own set of issues. But I still find that addressing the diet first is the most important thing. If you are exercising, no problem. You should notice no difference. Maybe in the first week when you're changing over from carb burning to fat burning, you might notice a little decrease in your ability to exercise at the gym, for example. And you know, if you're a, a marathon runner or a triathlete, any, anybody in triathlete? No, you don't count, Dr. Volek. So uh, if you're exercising that much, you may have to add a little carbohydrate along the way. Yes, sir? So uh, the doctors are saying that you need to exercise as you get older to keep the density of your bone up. Is, how does that uh, yeah, that's the, that's the advanced course. That's next week. Uh, if you should exercise. I'm not against exercise. Don't get me wrong. But in, for weight loss, the first thing to address is the diet. And I think exercise is really important for the long run, too. Yeah. Um, support for lifestyle change. We do have a support group that meets once a month at the Spartacus restaurant, the Greek place down the street at 6.30, and you're welcome to come. That, this group started a Facebook group and opened it to the public. We have people from all over the world who are part of the low carb support group. Make sure there's a the in it because there are other lookalike groups. But we're kind of known as the most strict version of low carb on Facebook and around because this is the approach I'm going to teach you today. If you have serious metabolic problems, diabetes, a lot of weight to lose, I would recommend that you do this version that I'm teaching you today. And that support group on Facebook will, will keep you on track in, in this way. A lot of recipes are, are uh, um, shared on the Facebook and I'm not a great cook or chef, I, I'm the doctor, but you need to know how to prepare the foods and all that, so the support group's excellent for that. Um, there's my contact information. Please email me if you have any questions. Um, that's all introductory stuff. What do I want you to eat? Turn the page to page four. So the program right now, I'd like you to think of it this way. If the food is not on page four, you can't have it. Okay? <laughs> Stick to the foods on page four. If you ask me, can I have blank, I'm going to say, is blank on page four? <laughs> if you lose page four, I have another page four for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. This page actually was borrowed with permission from the Atkins Center in New York City from Dr. Atkins and his group. I went there in 1998 to see what they were doing. Had a couple patients who had success and wanted to study from someone who had done the diet for a long time. So I borrowed this, this sheet and made some modifications, but basically it has some principles on here that don't follow other guidelines or rules because it was tried through lots and lots of people. And if there was a food that would cause trouble, like nuts, even though they're low in carbs, but they're a trigger food and a lot of people can't eat, uh, stop eating nuts, they're not on page four. So page four doesn't just follow the low carb rule, but it also was tried in lots and lots of, pa lots and lots of people in New York City. And then this was the basis for our research studies that we have done here at Duke University. The way page four works, the no sugar, no starch diet. This uh, diet is focused on providing your body with the nutrition it needs, proteins and fats, while minimizing foods that your body does not need, the carbohydrates. To be most effective, you'll need to keep the dietary carbohydrate to less than 20 grams per day. Your diet is to be made of exclusively of foods and beverages from this handout. It, it doesn't matter how the food is cooked. There's a lot of misunderstanding about that. You know, I can't have fried foods. And, well, Oil has no carbohydrates, so you can have fried foods as long as there's no coating that has carbohydrate on it. So here in North Carolina, I know you're probably having fried chicken every day. 
And that's okay. What a lot of people do is crush up the pork rinds, use a little egg wash for their meat, whether it's chicken or pork or fish, put it in the egg and then put it in the pork rinds, and they say that's the best fried chicken they've ever had. So you might try that with other, other meats as well. You haven't been to Bojangles lately? <laughs> I have to confess I've never eaten at Bojangles, but Chick-fil-A, or you can, have, you can have the char-grilled chicken. You can have the Kentucky Fried Chicken as long as grilled chicken. Grilled chicken has no coating on it. So there's nothing inherently wrong with fast food as long as there's no carbohydrate on the fast food from this standpoint. The carb-restricted diet for your purposes of metabolic improvement. So what do I want you to eat? First, when you're hungry, eat as much as you want of these foods in the next section. These foods have no carbs, so in a carb-counting diet, they don't count. So you can have an unlimited amount of beef, hamburger, hamburgers, pork, ham, bacon, lamb, veal, sausage, pepperonis, hot dogs, of course, no bun on the hot dog, no bread, uh, no bun on the burger. Uh, you can have chicken, turkey, duck. I have a Duke professor patient who goes to Whole Foods and Whole Paycheck, is that what you call it out here? Whole Foods, and he buys pheasant. Now, that's okay, you know, it's free range and you know, it probably had a name and everything. <laughs> and, uh, and that's all right. I have another Duke professor, he doesn't own a pot or a pan, and he drives through Biscuitville and orders the low carb bowl and they just don't send out the biscuit. He drives through Chick-fil-A for the char-grilled chicken. He drives through the greasiest spoon in town. We have one across the street here, it's called Cookout, and it's a really greasy burger, and he drives through there for, for dinner. It's all right. It doesn't matter if you spend a lot of money or a little money, all that matters is the carbohydrates, the grams of carbohydrates. And how many grams do I want you to stay under? 20, good, yeah. A lot easier than counting to 1,200 calories, is it not? if you're doing a calorie restricted diet. So fish and shellfish have no carbs. Tuna, tuna can be in the can, in oil or water. It can be fresh, it can be frozen. It's okay, no carbs there. Salmon, catfish, bass, trout, shrimp, scallops, crab, and lobster. Whole eggs are permitted without restrictions with the yolks. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I know you've been told eggs have been bad and are good and all that. Well, on a low carb diet, they're just fine. And I, you know, I think eggs are the perfect food nutritionally. Think about it. This little egg turns into a whole chicken. <laughs> right? <laughs> beep, beep. Okay, it has to be fertilized. Well, a steak doesn't turn into a cow. It can't. <laughs> so don't fear the eggs. I don't think you can have too many eggs. And I know you're going to go to your other doctors who are going to cite the guidelines of only two eggs per week and all this. And, oh gosh, if you like the egg white omelet, go ahead. But, you know, they're kind of old. Um, don't avoid the fats. Oils and, butters, oils and butters have no carbs, so there's no limitation on them. And you don't have to deliberately limit the quantities of these foods, but you should stop eating when you feel full. Uh, I want you to listen to your body and the body fullness and to stop. Now, you might want to go ahead and have a couple pounds of bacon just for fun and, and say you can do it and I'm doing a diet, but you know, the thrill wears off on that, let me tell you, uh, after the next day. But go ahead. Um, when you say eat as much as you want, yeah. isn't it possible to eat too much uh, of the protein and have an adverse effect on weight loss? So the question is, you say eat as much as you want, but is it possible to eat too much of the protein? Right now, I don't want you to worry too much about whether you're eating lots of fats or proteins. As you're starting out, you can do pretty well just by eating as much as your body tells you. Now, I tell you, you can have as much as you want, an unlimited amount, but I know you're not going to want much. So there's some dietitians who I've talked to, and they, they, uh, they have this, uh, they fall out. You know that term where you know you can't tell people to eat as much as they want and lose weight. And I say, yes, I can because they're not going to be hungry. So what's going to happen in just a couple days is your hunger will go way down and you're not going to want much. So you're not going to eat much of these. Um, now if you go, oh right, sir, you came and you're on this diet, you've been on it a while and you're at a plateau. Well, we'll talk about that in the clinic 
where you might be eating a little too much protein. Some of that protein can be turned into carbs, but this is a little confusing for the newcomers, so we'll talk about that later, okay? Uh, any questions about the proteins? You know, there's no controversy that this is the most important thing to eat. My colleagues, the bariatric surgeons, one of their most popular things to do, bless their hearts, is to make your stomach the size of an egg and then reroute your intestines so you can't absorb the food that you ate. Well, they asked the world experts, when we make the stomach about the size of an egg and then reroute the intestines, what should people eat? And the world experts said, protein. Your body needs protein. Protein comes first, but you know, immediately after the surgery, most of the time, oh, you went through it, yeah. So most of the time, you're just, you just can't eat for a while, and then you start with shakes, protein shakes, because you really can't digest the meat and stuff at first. So a cheeky colleague of mine says, well, you can go to the surgeon and then be told to eat protein, or you can just eat protein like I'm telling you now. It's up to you. Um, but yes, you had a question. Yeah. I mean, things like there's so much mercury in, in canned tuna, and there's a lot of chemicals yeah. in beef that's not a grass fed. Doesn't that have some effect? So I teach this in two ways. The first step is to understand the carbohydrate restriction. And if, but then if you ask me what's the healthiest diet on earth, we'll get to that. Because so many of you all, so many of y'all eat at McDee's and these places, and if you had to worry about all those things, you would just be overwhelmed. So I'm going to teach you the basic carbohydrate restriction, just count the carbs of carbohydrate, and then over time, if you choose this to be a lifestyle you want to do forever, then you may have to be concerned about other things. You know, but a lot of uh, my patients can't afford these other kinds of foods, and why have them not be able to understand and use carbohydrate restriction if we make it so difficult and have to include organic, locally grown, all that stuff. So, great, great question though. Did I dodge that? <laughs> yes. So I'll, I'll talk about vegetarian and lactose uh, intolerant folks in just a minute. Got, it, got some uh, special slides for that. Um, so those are the proteins. No carbs in those proteins. So as you're starting to put together, you know, the bacon, hamburger ideas with your proteins, um, lobster and butter for your meal. So this is where a high-end Manhattan-style low-carb diet is a surf and turf with a Caesar salad, no croutons, a very dry martini, uh, asparagus on the side, and a creme brulee easy on the sugary top. And, and Dr. Atkins in New York City would say that that was the, a great diet and all. Most of my patients can't afford that, so their poor man's surf and turf is the shrimp and the, the sirloin, uh, but they could still have the, the salad, no croutons, and a, a side that's low in carbs. But are you kind of seeing how, yeah, you think these are high fat foods, but that's okay. Because you remember your uh, fat-burning machine, right? Yeah, that's right. So you're burning the fat that you eat. In fact, so if you have a car and it's a gas-burning machine, you put gas in it, right? So if you're a human and you're a fat-burning machine, you put fat in it. Oh. Oh, you mean you were told not to eat fat. Well, you see, that's that right-hand side of the road, left-hand side of the road kind of thing. On a low-fat diet, you wouldn't eat fat and you wouldn't have salt. But on a low-carb diet, you can have the fat and have the salt. I think, was there a question back here? Uh, either way, bye. Let's see, can you look at the nuts, nuts? No, they're not on page four, can't have them. Next question. <laughs> Don't worry, after a couple of days of moaning and groaning, you won't miss them, but. Do you consider organ meats the same as what you have as Yeah, meat? organ meats have no carbs, yeah. So yeah, you know that fascinating professor, Finney, <laughs> oh, he's not even here, so anyway, he talks about how the native populations 
prize those organ meats. And you know, that's a big difference between the American diet and the European diet, for example. I, I like the idea of, some, of having sausages and bratwurst and, oh, I should say that I grew up in Wisconsin. So, you know, I grew up on, on uh, we went from mother's milk to bratwurst and, and beer, but, <laughs> and now I just eat, drink low carb beer, so, um, and lots of cheese and all that. Um, uh, the organ meats are fine, no carbs there. So the next section, you, salad greens and non-starchy veggies must be eaten every day, but the amount is limited. It's a common mistake because on a low-fat diet, you can have unlimited vegetables. But vegetables have no fat, but they have lots of carbs. So you have to limit the vegetables. It's a common mistake to overeat them. I want you to have two cups of leafy greens and one cup of a non-starchy veggie, and that's for the whole day. So if you're having vegetables in your leafy green salad, that counts. So sometimes they're double counting or missing out. Well, that was my salad and those little cherry tomatoes and the cucumbers and all didn't count as a vegetable. Well, they still count. So be careful of overeating the vegetables. And in terms of measurements, go home and compare your fist to a measuring cup. You're going to find your fist is just about the same size as a measuring cup. And so two fistfuls of leafy greens one fistful of a non-starchy vegetable, and that's good enough. So, uh, yeah, sir, you have a bigger fist. I bet you can probably have a little extra non-starchy vegetable, and you'll be okay. Uh, you know, most dietitians are amazed that people on my program say they cheat when they have an extra cup of vegetables. <laughs> when, when cheating to them is someone's having a half of a pizza, you know, so... Yeah, because you have to be really strict about, about the carbs and the sugars. Oh, I, I just came from that conference, and you know how much sugar there is in the entire bloodstream? There's one teaspoon in the entire bloodstream. If you calculated that out from checking your blood sugar. So, so the body really doesn't need all the sugar and starch that even maybe you've eaten all your life up until now. Oh, but that's maybe why you have diabetes, and that's why you're here in this clinic room, you know, but if you go back, you would have survived, you know, longer than me because when the famine came, this extra energy would keep you alive. So the cruel joke is that the famine never comes now. And so your body is designed to hold on to extra energy for the day when there's no food around and then that day never comes. So. If you're ending up in my clinic here, your body is probably really good at storing all that extra energy. And right now, it's not such a good thing in our current environment. Uh, so do you see some vegetables that you like on there? Great. Uh, if you don't have high blood pressure or heart failure, then use bouillon as needed. And um, as you leave today, I would like to just talk to you about the medications you're taking, just to verify what you're taking. I may tailor this. If you're taking blood pressure medicines, I'll say no bullion unless you have symptoms. If you have high uh, heart failure history, then I'll say no bullion at all. And we'll monitor your blood pressure as you come back just to make sure it's fine. Uh, the next section, foods that are allowed in limited quantities, just to make sure this is very tasty and something you can do. You can have cheese up to four ounces a day, cream up to two tablespoons a day. This is whipping cream, heavy cream, light cream, sour cream. You know, a moment about the dairy, milk is out because milk has lactose in it. Lactose, os means sugar, so, and skim milk is the worst. What about 2%? No, no, that's still lots of skim milk plus 2% fat, so that's a lot of sugar in it. But I want you to have cream. Yeah, remember those days when you had cream in your coffee? It's delicious, and you don't need much. And there is a limitation on the cream at first, this is one of those things that might not compute because, well, there aren't any carbs in cream. Well, there's a little bit of carbs. And again, this is one of those trigger foods that it's really easy to put a little sugar-free syrup in there and to down the whole eight ounces of cream. And then that's where you hit the, the calorie idea where you can have too many calories. So we limit the cream at first. Um, mayonnaise, up to two tablespoons a day. Olives, avocado. 
Another low-carb joke is, uh, yeah, you can have fruit, you can have an avocado. <laughs> um, of course, it's not a sweet fruit, uh, but half a avocado a day, you put some mayonnaise in there, or ranch dip, or, or however you want it, make guacamole, no problem. Lemon lime juice, soy sauce, pickles, up to two low-carb pickles a day. Zero-carb snacks at the very bottom. Now, zero-carb means that they're unlimited. So you're counting your carbs, you're, you're getting 10 grams from your vegetables and leafy greens, let's say, and now you add another 10 grams, you're at 20 for the day, and you add a, a uh, sugar-free jello that has zero grams, how many carbs do you have? 20 plus zero, 20, okay. And then those chicharrones spark rind things, they have no carbs, so here's your chicharrones, you're at 20 grams, zero, 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 zero. you just had your bag of chicharrones. There's no carbs in it. So you just count the carbs. If there are no carbs in it, it doesn't count. Make sense? Confusing? Yeah, no. It is that simple. I know, yeah. Um, so pork rinds, pepperoni slices are really popular for snacks. Uh, they're kind of greasy. Yeah, because grease is, grease is fat. You're a fat burning machine. You got it. Good. <laughs> Ham, turkey slices, beef jerky, there's a lot of great stuff at the deli. You like the special meats, uh, go for it. A roll up is the slang term for when you take a piece of cheese or butter and you roll it up in a piece of meat, like that. That's a roll up, you can have one or two of those as you're running out the door in the morning late for work. It doesn't have to take a lot of time to do a low carb diet. Have you ever done a one minute egg? It's like the McDonald egg. You have a, have a bowl, you cooking spray or put some oil in it, and you whisk your egg in there and microwave one minute. You have your egg. So it can be quick, or you can do the Julia Child version, spend hours on your beef bourguignon. It's fabulous. Yeah, I didn't think you wanted to do that. Um, these days, people want the convenience. Um, so any questions about page four? Remember, if it's not on page four, don't eat it. That's right. I, excuse me. If it's not on page four, don't eat it. Thank you. Yes, first. Talk to me afterwards if you're training for a marathon or in, <laughs> endurance. Because I just came from this conference, and, and uh, Dr. Volek, who does this research at the University of Connecticut, was saying once you're keto adapted, you don't have to worry about the carbs. So it depends what stage you're at. Yeah. So why is mayonnaise liberal? I don't know. That's one of the mysteries of page four. <laughs> <laughs> Next question I can't answer. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the things that they learned of using these foods in, they estimated 60,000 patients through New York City in the Atkins Center. So you're wondering if you can make your own mayo without any carbs that it would be a freebie. That could be, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, this is just setting you out on a path. This, you're paying me the big bucks for this to work. So this is what I'm teaching you. It's going to work if you follow it. I can almost guarantee it. Now, if you stray from this and have a little more and it still works, that's fine with me. You know, I don't go to bed thinking I had 10 people who stayed to page four. I go to bed thinking I had 10 people who had success on however they did it. So this is just a guideline. So, yes. I'm very concerned about the diabetics and their ins insulin and their kidneys and their kidney function. That's why I want to put them on this diet. Absolutely. So, proteinuria, from, uh, if you have kidney trouble, one of the things that can happen is you can leak protein in the urine. And then there's this common old wives' tale, basically, that limit the protein in the diet and you'll fix the protein in the urine. Well, actually the diabetes lesion causing the proteinuria gets better when you fix the diabetes. So I've seen proteinuria go away. 
There's one study, I can email it to you, by Fichetti, where they did a low-carb diet and there was less progression to dialysis with people with renal problems and diabetes. So it's not really well studied, but I'm very concerned about the proteinuria and if you follow this, it will probably get better, which is probably not what you were expecting as an answer, right? Um, but uh, I am concerned about it. So other, yeah. What class are you in, ma'am? <laughs> um, this is the initial low-carb class. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in fact, this is healthy eating for the rest of your life. So I shouldn't worry about how low I'm So you don't whittle away. So if you're a fat-burning machine and you eat fat and your body tells you how much fat and protein to have, you won't whittle away to nothing. Um, so let's think about the lion in the wilderness. Do they whittle away to nothing? I mean, they don't eat any carbohydrates. In fact, most of the time they're not hungry. They lie around, the lions. <laughs> they eat once or twice a week. I, a couple of my patients went on safari, and if you lion experts, I want to meet one. Um, be, and they eat once or twice a week. They have no diabetes, no little dietitians telling them to eat breakfast every day. <laughs> oh, you think you have to eat breakfast? No, no, that's if you're a kid. You might have to do that, not when you're an adult, and especially not when you're trying to lose weight. If you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. If you're not hungry in the morning, don't eat. As long as you don't get ravenous later on. Okay, so time out. How are we doing for time? Oh, you're beyond it. <laughs> oh, I am? Oh, yeah. I thought it would go to 545. Yeah? Okay. So another 15 minutes, maybe? Okay. If you want to leave, just quietly pack your things and uh, <laughs> make sure you fill out your evaluations. <laughs> okay, so time in. Uh, time out or? Yeah, time in. Oh, okay. Well, actually, the, you know, you're right, the gallbladder contains enzymes that help with fat digestion. And when you eat fat in a meal, it squeezes out these enzymes at right about the same time. But actually, I have a lot of people who've had their gallbladders removed, and they do fine on, a, on this kind of diet. Um, if you have existing gallstones, and you're starting to eat fat, you might have a wiggling of those stones, and, they, and it, people might think the diet caused it when, well, really, the stones were there before, so that's kind of confusing, but it's okay. The gallbladder, uh, there's really no reason, unless you really have an intolerance to these foods that you can't eat this way. Uh, I haven't met anyone who, who for whom the, um, even post-surgical, post-bypass, uh, gastric bypass surgery as well. Um, so let's turn to page five. The main restriction is carbohydrate or carbs for short, so I just want you to know the language because people are going to talk about this. So sugars are simple carbs. Avoid these sugars. Well, now that low-carb support group scours Durham for low-carb items, and they have found this Carb Master yogurt available at Kroger. It's kind of like Greek yogurt, the, the plain, and they put little pieces of fruit at the bottom. It's four grams per serving of it. Carb Master yogurt. You might want to try that especially if you're craving fruit. And then the Diet Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice has two grams per eight ounces. And that whole aisle of juices at the store, the only ones that we've been able to find is the Ocean Spray Diet Cranberry, Cranberry Blueberry, Cranberry Pomegranate. If you're missing fruit, that's another way to get the fruit flavor. Uh, starches are complex carbs. They get digested down to simple sugars and raise the blood sugar. So you have to avoid these guys. Uh, yeah, no pinto beans for you, sorry. Yeah, no Pop and John on, on this uh, New Year's Day. Uh, they have that down, down there in South Carolina. Okay, so carbs are out, fats and oils are in. Even butter. Do you remember back to one day when this is the way people ate? 
on the farm or, or somewhere where you'd have bacon in the morning, you have the grease, you save it for later. It would be wasteful not to eat it, right? Uh, so that's why I, well, I want you to think of maybe even sometime in, in your past when people ate this way. And salad dressings, you can have oil and vinegar, you can have so full fat, blue cheese, ranch, Caesar, Italian. Avoid the light dressings as they commonly have more carbohydrate in them. The industry standard of light means that they cut the fat out and they usually add carbohydrate to it. I never thought those things tasted very good anyway. But a Cobb salad was designed for a low carb diet and is an excellent choice. It has chopped eggs, bacon, grated cheese uh, in uh, with the salad. Fats are important because they taste good and they make you feel full. So our bodies have two ways to feel full. One is to stretch the stomach. You may have done this before where you drink two glasses of water or a head of lettuce before your meal and then you stretch the stomach or you have rice at the Chinese restaurant and then an hour later you're, you're, you're hungry again. Well, that's the stomach stretch. There's even a book called Volumetrics, how to get the volume in your stomach. Well, the stretch is one way to get full. The other way is by eating fat. So when fat hits the stomach, a signal is sent to the brain, I'm getting full and that signal stays a long time. So this is an elegant way to stay full and, and eat. In fact, the French are the masters at this. Have you been to a fancy French restaurant lately? So you get a uh, foie gras, which is fatty liver, which is fed, corn fed geese. Corn is carbohydrates, so corn makes fatty liver even in people. Um, you have a little foie gras, you start getting full, you have a little little salad, a little entree, a little this, a little that. If there's uh, apple, it's really it's a sliver slice of it. And, and then you have cheese plate for dessert or a really high fat chocolate mousse. And you step away and, you, and they come out with a really little scoop for the chocolate mousse. And yet it's so filling, but I hardly ate anything. So it's the chemical fullness that the fats give you, and I look at to the French cuisine as the masters of using that, uh, using fats. Sweeteners and desserts, you can have sweet things, but just not things sweetened with sugar. Any of these other artificial sweeteners at first are fine. I kind of see these as methadone maintenance to get you off sugar. <laughs> now, if you ask me what the healthiest diet is on earth, don't have any of that garbage, okay? Have natural sweetness from berries, things like that. But, oh, right, you want to have all those candy bars and those de little Debbie cakes and ho-hos and ding-dongs and, yeah, I don't want you to have those. Have some sugar-free things at first. The best one is the one that you like, but if you have diarrhea or gas or bloating, it might be the sugar alcohols. Um, all right, you're, you've lost 100 pounds and you're at a plateau. Well, it might be the artificial sweeteners. I've had several people with good reliability go off the artificial sweeteners and start losing weight again. Um, as my friends and colleagues in Sweden teach me and tell me and berate me, you don't have to have any of that sweet stuff. Of course, uh, Andreas Ienfeldt, the dietdoctor.com from Sweden, has pickled herring for fun. <laughs> so it's just a different, different style. Uh, and uh, the American sweet tooth is bizarre. It, it's not normal. In fact, we've created carb addicts. I'm one of them. It took me 10 years to not have jelly beans on Easter. That was the last vestige of that sugar high or uncontrollable way to eat it. Um, the way I did it is I was out of town on that day. It just happened to be, so it was, that's a technique you can use, just be out of the place where you normally would have it. Um, beverages, really drink when you're thirsty. You can have caffeine. We arbitrarily say three servings, but there are a lot of, there's a lot of wiggle room on that. What always kind of made me scratch my head is there are diet programs that say don't drink caffeine, and yet then we put caffeine in pills for weight loss. Hmm, <laughs> the American way, right? Eat so healthy that we need to put things in pills for you and buy my pills. 
Well, oh, right, you used to, you used to live in, in Seattle and you had 10 cups of Starbucks every day and that's why you're so thin. Um, caffeine does raise the metabolic rate a little bit. So if you want the caffeine and can tolerate it and like it, it's the stuff you put in the coffee that you have to watch out that may have the carbs. Turn the page to page five. Alcohol, just about every program will say don't drink alcohol at first, and that's true if you want to maximize it or keep alcohol to the weekends. Um, the low carb equivalencies, alcohol is technically not a carb, but we count one beverage as a five gram equivalency. So a low carb beer, five grams. A five inches of wine and a dry, dry wine in a wine glass, five grams. And a, a hard liquor shot with a diet soda or mixer or on the rocks or whatever, five grams, just as a rule of thumb. So if there's some days when you want to drink your carbs, <laughs> enough said. Quantities, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. I was raised, were you, with the idea that you had to eat everything on your plate because there were starving people in China, Africa, Appalachia. Uh, best I can tell, there's still starving people there. And you know what happened to me? I, I learned to keep eating. You don't have to eat everything on your plate, even if your mother told you. Uh, now, if you're a child, oh, I'm so glad you brought your child in to this, and I know she's probably hearing some things that, you know, you, know, you do have to eat when your mom says, okay. But when you're an adult, especially when you're trying to lose weight, you don't have to eat everything on your plate and uh, just because it's there. If you think about it, who determines the portion size for you? It's usually the restaurant, it's the packaging. Do you just eat till the package is gone? So your body should determine the portion size. Uh, there's some couples who are 100 pounds different and they end up eating the same amount. That doesn't make sense. Uh, so you should, the meter should be in your body is how much, how much you should eat. So here are some important reminders. Here's some books and cookbooks. Here's the most popular website for recipes among my patients is Linda's Low Carb website, recipes. It's all free, a lot of pictures, a lot of family style, easy to prepare. There are never more than five ingredients on the list. Um, oh, that's right. So I'm going to point you to Julia Child. There's usually 20 ingredients, takes two days to do it, but it's really good. I think that's just fine. Turn to page seven, low carb menu planning. If you're a dietitian, you'd wanna see where you're getting your protein, your fats, and your carbs. That's the top half of page five. Seven, excuse me, the bottom page could be as easy as this. Bacon and eggs, grilled chicken salad, pepperoni slices, or cheese stick for a snack burger or steak. Green salad with, and green beans with butter. It's just food, and this fixes Obesity, diabetes, fatty liver, your bowel syndrome, heartburn. It's pretty amazing. It's just food. We're coming down the home stretch. Turn to page eight. There are two ways to count carbs. Total carbs and net carbs. I want you to use total carbs. You've declared yourself as needing to come to a weight loss clinic because of your obesity, your diabetes. And so I'm teaching you what I call the old Atkins. This is the way the Dr. Atkins and Dr. Eads and Dr. Vernon, Dr. Bernstein, all of the doctors who use low carb diets over the last 30 years use total grams of carbs in their clinic setting. Oh, right, that book, yeah, the new Atkins, well, I'm an author on it. Well, you know, we use net carbs because so many people can use the net carbs, but so many of you need the old Atkins because you're in my clinic. So we wanted to broaden the appeal and make a lot of people be able to do low carb diets. And basically what happens is you get three cups of vegetables in the new Atkins, whereas I just want you to have one cup of vegetables in the old Atkins, okay? Um, some people absorb the fiber grams. That's a, so there's this term, non-absorbable fiber, and it's an, it's an oxymoron. Uh, and it's a, I, I met with Joanne Slavin, who's the University of Minnesota fiber expert, world expert. She was actually on the USDA panel, and she said that some people absorb the fiber. So I want to use the most conservative way 
you're paying me the big bucks to make this work, so use total grams. Now it's a little easier because if you look at the nutrition facts, all you need to do is look at the number that comes after total carbohydrate. So G means grams, and this is cauliflower, which is a representative vegetable on your diet. Cauliflower in the t black title bar at the top of the nutrition facts label. So how many grams of carbohydrate in a serving of cauliflower? Seven. Seven G, seven. It means seven grams, right? So don't worry about the dietary fiber thing. That's if you're doing net grams. So the only number you need to be concerned about at the moment is total carbohydrate. 